We are live. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Associate Boardroom Impact Talk Series 1 on Responsible Corporate Board, Request for Women Participation in India. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, all the most ethical businesses, as we know, they comply to regulatory frameworks and they also do so while constituting the votes with executive and non executive members. Uh, we know that participation of women on corporate boards encompasses the intent, which is beyond the concept of gender diversity, women empowerment, or inclusion. Rather, this has become uh, one of the most pertinent strategies being part of the corporate governance frameworks. I have some data to share with you. If you look at and refer the European countries, they lead in appointing women as directors on a company's board. Recently, European Union states have given initial approval to pushing firms to appoint women to at least 40% of non-executive director roles or 33% of all boards jobs by 2027. Among them, Norway stands top with 45%, whereas India holds 4.7%. Another approach is to focus on increasing women representation in senior management positions, not only their representation on boards. So far as the mandates in Indian context, they are concerned. And as per second proviso, section 149.1 of companies at 2013, such class or classes of companies as may be prescribed, they shall have at least one woman director. Also, while as per SEBI LODR Regulation 2015, appointment of women director will apply to only such companies to whom corporate governance rules are applicable, Rule 3 of companies, appointment and qualification of directors rule 2014 provides class of companies which shall appoint at least one woman director. While most of the Top 1000 listed companies have complied with the directives from the Security Exchange Board of India. Boards still have a long way to go before they become part of the more inclusive and impactful decision making process. I hope uh, this particular program uh, is going to discuss and the present ch status, challenges, and the way forward approach in context of the broad subject. Today, this National Council for Corporate Affairs, Company Law and Corporate Governance, which is one of the most dynamic arm of the SOCM, contributing for impactful policy advocacy interventions, bridging between government, regulators, industries in India, is virtually organizing this series. The National Council is being chaired by Ms. Preeti Malhotra. She is the chairman of Smart Bharat Group and past president of Institute of Company Securities of India and co-chaired by uh, Mr. Bijas Sasdeva and CA and Krishna, Sri Krishna. This council has around eight uh, focused task forces catering the need of broadly the subject of the corporate affairs and company law. Uh, this is just on lighter mode that while constituting this particular program, preparing for it and inviting them in guests and speakers, I was not, uh, not mindful about maintaining the size of it, size of this particular panel and the forum. But we try to come out with quality content, good intent, and fortunately, somehow the size of this forum is absolutely, you know, aligned uh, with the you know, requirement of the gender diversity. We have five eminent female women uh, speakers. We have five male speakers to join in this panel discussion as well. So we have a uh, pleasure of inviting uh, our guest of honor. She is with us, uh, Dr. Aruna Sharma. She is with us. She is IES retired. She is former secretary, Ministry of Steel and Ministry of Electronics uh, and IT, Government of India. She is a former member of Digitization Committee of RBI. We welcome you, ma'am. We have with us Mr. Vasudev Mukherjee, Assistant Secretary General Associate, CA Dr. Ashok Haldia, Chairman Associate Task Force for Accounting Standards, Sustainability Accounting, and Integrated Financial Reporting. We have been joined by CA Dr. Ashish K. Bhattacharya, he's the founder and managing director, non-linear sites, OBC, private limited. We welcome you, sir. The panel will be joined by Ms. Sonal Matu, advocate, helping hands, 
She is an independent director with Vmart Retail, Asiana Housing Limited, Polymedicure Limited director as well. We will be shortly joined by Shadia Ilmi. She is the government nominee director on several boards. We will be joined by the, another panelist, Dr. S.K. Gupta. She is author, she is former MD CEO of Professional Insolvency Professional Agency of ICI and MD RP of Institute of Cost Accountants of India. We have been joined by uh, CA Deepa Agarwal. She is partner with SR Bartlebo and Associates LLP. We will be shortly joined by Ms. Hiru Mirchandani. She is the independent director with Crompton Greaves, Consumer Electronics Limited, Tata Tele Services Limited, Neil Campbell Limited, Medcas Health Services, and our co chairman, Mr. Bhijesh Sajdeva, will join us. And the program is supported by Smart Bharat Group, Renew Power, Spice Jet, and the support from the team of the corporate affairs is there with. Uh, extended by Mr. Bikas uh, Bardhaman, Mr. Jatin Kochar, and Ms. Ritima, uh, Ritima Singh, as well as Mr. Bishal. So, uh, at the outset, I would like to take opportunity of inviting uh, Mr. Basadev Mukherjee, Assistant Secretary General, to please give your uh, welcome note. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Santosh. Uh, Dr. Aruna Sharma, uh, I has retired from a Secretary, Ministry of Steel and Ministry of Electronics and IT, Government of India, former member of Digitization uh, Committee of RBI, our guest of honor for today, uh, Dr. Ashok Haldia, Dr. Ashish Bhattacharya, Dr. S.K. Gupta, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to all of you to Asachan's Boardroom Impact Talk Series, uh, <clears throat> the first edition on uh, responsible corporate boards the quest for women's participation in India. The changes in the past in the regulatory environment on corporate governance have enhanced the role of the directors and have made them trustees of good government governance. Over the years, with the further evolution of a culture of good corporate governance, the imperative need for women as directors in the board was felt by all, including the regulators such as Ministry of Corporate Affairs, uh, and Securities and Exchange Board of India, SEBI, to ensure an effective and balanced composition of the board and to ensure accountability and credibility uh, to the board process and to strengthen sound practices. The requirement of at least one woman director on the board has opened a window of opportunity for women professionals to take active and considerable part in the functioning of an organization. This has also created vistas of opportunity for professionals to acquire experience beyond working in uh, the, the traditional practice of firm. <clears throat> Though a woman director has to play a role like any other director, she brings with her the compassion, practicality, and intuitiveness exclusive to her. A director has an onerous duty to spearhead uh, the operations of the organizations and lead it towards a profitable entity which caters to the inter interest of each and every stakeholder, be it government, society, or its own shareholders. I believe that this session will benefit the larger section of the business fraternity and corporates who are attending this event. Once again, I warmly welcome uh, all of you and thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Basdev Mukherjee. Uh, now, I would like to take opportunity and invite uh, CA Dr. Ashok Khalia, Chairman, Associate Task Force for Accounting Standards, Sustainability Accounting, and Integrated Financial Reporting to give your sir address, please. Over to you, Ashok Khalia, sir. Very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Indeed, a great pleasure to be with you on this important topic of responsible corporate boards, the quest for women participation in India. Mr. Sharma, Sharma, the former Secretary of Government of India, Dr. Ashish Bhattacharya, uh, the known uh, academicians and expert in the accounting and standards and the governance, Mr. Basudev Mukherjee, Mr. Siddhi Masin, Shantosh and Jatin. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, once again. Uh, we are on a topic which to me appears should have not been relevant for the time in the context that the movements are as competent, have as, as much caliber, as much expertise as the, their counterpart, the male and the female. And therefore, there should not be any debate or any discussions on a, on a quest for women's representations on the 
boards of corporates. Unfortunately, that has not been the situation in India or in any other part of the world. The situation is improving, but not to the extent that one would like to be, or one that the that the human that would command based on their competence and caliber to be the, on the board of the Indian companies. If you look at it in retrospect, as to what has really contributed as the lack of women representation on the board is the very genesis of the origin of the corporates and also the way the corporates are managed. You have founders who are male dominated, you have CEOs who are male, you are chairman of the boards who are male. Now, if these three are the male dominated, then obviously the women's representation on the board cannot be that effective as it ought to be, or as, as the women's would demand by their competence to be. Uh, we have the Companies Act 2013 does provide for an, uh, a, a kind of a reservation for the movement directors on the corporates, on a, on, a, on a large size corporates. But is that enough? Is that a justification? Is that a fair justice uh, to the women's? To me, certainly not. I recall way back in 2000 or maybe early 2000, uh, when there was debate going on on women representation on the board, I was interviewed by a, a by a leading newspaper as to what are my views on that, and I said yes, it is needed, but then we should also see that the, that the women who comes on the board are they have the they have the competence to deliver at the board and it is as good as for the human directors as much as it is required for the male directors. The way as the newspapers would quote you, they said Dr. Haldia, the secretary ICI feels that it is not yet the right time for women to be on the Indian boards. And this was the, this was the headline of that, that national daily and, and lo and behold, I was bombarded with the phone calls as to what Dr. Haldia you have said. Now that was the feel at that point of time as to the as to the need for a woman on the board, but it has taken uh, 10 to 15 years for the government to bring out the legislation providing for the women directors. But to me, that's not enough. Unless we change the mindset, unless the women themselves demand and command the position on the board, and unless the family-owned businesses within them the within the, 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 the female members of those families are groomed or competent to come on the board and they manage the co corporates. I would believe the, it, the, the, it would be more symptomatic than the effective representation of women on the board. One is not enough. You have the board, which has 10 members, 15 members, eight members, and you have a single women director. Can the she be effective? Normally one would argue that why not, if, if, if a male director can be effective, why not a single male direct, female director cannot be effective? She, she need competence and caliber in herself to be competitive, but we need to live in a practical world. And the role of the chairman of the board becomes most important in that perspective. A chairman of the leading board, a, challenge, a, a, a chairman of a dynamic board, a chairman of a future board, would, would ensure that the board member do participate and contribute to the best of their competence and caliber. And therefore, chairman has to see that the lady or the women director on the board, what are, his, what are her core competencies? And see that she plays an effective role. She, she, she is facilitated to play that effective role according to her competence. Now, my own experience of being on the board and working with the female directors, they bring competence, they bring sobriety, they bring ethics, they bring, I would not say conservatives, but pragmatists in the functioning of the board. Now, these are the essential qualities of a, of a, of a pragmatic board, of a competent board, of a future, futuristic board. Now, therefore, I would believe that the time has come that we, we change our mindset. The law should change. Normally, I would believe in the gender equality and why there should be, there should be reservation, but then we have been led to a situation where the women have not find have not been able to have due justice to their caliber, and therefore I would believe the time has come to increase the number of women directors on the board. And what needs to be done is the is the is the law needs to be changed, or the other measures required to be done. 
what are those other images could be at the corporate level the mindset of the uh, of the of the founders i would believe if you want to bring more transparency and the state forwardness and forthrightness in the board more and more women participation is needed on the board now and therefore uh, a, a, a founder or the chairman of the board has to have that board minded or has to welcome that state forwardness the positive thinking the uh, the forward looking thinking in the board deliberations and he need to facilitate that at the at the board level at the same time we need to also focus on what are the bottlenecks what are the stumbling blocks in the women's coming to the indian boards despite their competence and we need to address that as a corporate as a trade industry body and as a government now i believe this conference or uh, this webinar provides that platform and we have selected the the directors the representative from trade industry bodies and those who have been on the board of india com indian companies and those who have been in the government like mr sharuna sharma who has remained in the government and played such an effective role at the in the governance at the government level to bring to the uh, to the uh, to the forum what needs to be done i would say law is necessary but i think a dynamic world a dynamic uh, a profession a dynamics in this world would not require law to be both to, to be bolstered to be on the on the indian boards so what are those measures that we need to do and therefore this conference becomes very much uh, necessary and i believe the sochm has done a wonderfully good job by organizing this conference and focusing on those aspects rather law is one thing and the atomy law is secondary aspect here is what way the positive contribution we as a corporate the trade industry association the professional bodies and the women themselves can play to be on the board of indian companies and being there to be able to play effective role thank you very much ladies and gentlemen once again thank you thank you very much sir for your kind lightning address uh, as always sir uh, we are grateful to hear learn from you sir now i take the opportunity of inviting uh, c ashish ke bhattacharya he is the founder managing director non linear sites opc private limited i will not just go in detail of profile reading because sir is uh, famously known as the author famously known as a professor he has been director to imt gaziabad he is now associated with sim nadar university he is doing a um, great job and deed towards the corporate governance best practices and promotion of the same thank you very much sir for joining us and i welcome and hand over to you sir he dr ashish bhattacharya sir thank you santosh for inviting me to participate in this particular seminar and good afternoon to everyone all the panelists dr sharma dr haldia and others the topic is very relevant we are talking about women participation in india and dr haldia has said that law is not required for that why there should be a law it should be automated yes he is right in one sense but what is important for us to understand that we are in india we are in a culture where male domination is omnipresent not only in the board but also in the family i recall that it is not the india which for framed the law and it is not the first india is not the first there are norway spain france uk all framed law long back that there should be women directors and at the beginning as santos has put in that uk is now in 2022 said that 40% of the women director should be on the board and some senior position in the board should be with the women directors usually when we read the evolution of law we find that there is a gap between social expectation and the law that means first the social expectation is built and then the law follows but it is in this case just the reverse first the law is constituted law is formulated and then the social expectation is 
today in society, not only in India, elsewhere, where male is dominating and that is the culture. And women are not given many responsibilities. I can tell you that when I was young, then if a woman has gone to study the engineering, she was the hero in that particular community, not known. Today you look at how many women are there studying engineering and management. It was not there earlier. If you look at the gender diversity in the companies, they are working on it. And you will find it is much less than 50%. I recall that when the law first came, then the mother of a promoter was inducted in the board. She was 90 years old to fulfill the requirement of the law. And it was a large private sector company, family company. And therefore, it was just to fill the form, to tick mark the box that women were inducted as a director. In a recent amendment of LODR, it says that top 1,000 companies should have at least one independent woman director. That is, family members cannot become a director in the board to fulfill that particular element of the company's act. LODR, I will say, not company that. Because we find that in the board, family members and executive directors are usually subservient to the chairperson who is a promoter. Or even when we talk about the public sector companies, then also we find that the executive directors are subservient to the CEO or the chairperson if you call CMD. And therefore, unless there is an independent director in the board, it is just a tick mark approach, tick the box approach that is being adapted by companies. So why this reluctance? Why we cannot take women on the board? The answer is not about the competence of the woman, about the culture. It is about the culture that is important. The ecosystem we are talking about. Now, in recent past, say last two decades, we see women are occupying very senior position, very important positions, whether it is a profession of law, profession of accountancy, or it is executive position, and therefore competence is not a question mark. Question mark is culture. In India, at present, 17% of the board members are women directors. 17% is a good improvement over a decade's time. Yes, we have to go to 40%, let us say. But again, we should be very careful to understand that this reservation is not a quota as such to women empowerment. This is a question of bringing diversity in the board. This is the point here that we all talk about from theoretical literature as well as otherwise. We say that a board is effective only if it is diverse. And diversity is not about only gender diversity. Diversity always talks about diversity in terms of the age, in terms of experience, in terms of ethnicity, so on and so forth. For example, in US, just now the NASDAQ has said that there should be unrepresented minority on the board at least one. Now the question that comes to our mind and Dr. Haldia has referred to one of that very important question, is one woman director enough in the boardroom? The answer is, when I discuss with various people about it, that may or may not be. Because in a male-dominated boardroom, one woman director may be hesitant to speak out, to express her own opinion. But again, the question arises, if she comes in few meetings, that kind of inhibition goes away. We can ask, when we look at the bureaucracy, whether a woman secretary, joint secretary, is 
less effective as compared to the male secretaries. I had to interact when I was in IICA with a woman seg a joint secretary, and she was frightening us. I am not talking in the bad sense, but in the right sense that whatever is the point of view she used to express, she used to argue. And therefore, the question is not of how many women are there in the board. What is important is inhibition has to go out. And more and more we get the women in the board, we shall be able to understand the effect of diversity in the board. When, of course, today we are talking about gender diversity, but we can speak about all kinds of diversity. Now, yes, how can we make women effective? I was in a public sector board and there was a woman professor in the board and I find that she used to bring a very different perspective. If you read the book of psychology, they will say that there is no difference in the brain of a male and a female. No difference in that. Therefore, there is a myth whether they are more intelligent or less intelligent as compared to men. But again, I say that women brings a different perspective because the role they play in the family and the society is much different from the role that a male plays in the family and the society. And therefore, I find, of course, it is not based on my research as such, but my experience that women are more sensitive to social issues. I recall that when I was in the board, there was an accident and one of the employees, lower level employees, died in that accident. And the board was discussing about compensation. Yes, legal compensation has to be paid, but what can we do additionally? Now there I found the contribution of the woman director was immense. She said that it is not the question of how much money or compensation we give. The question is what we can do for the family, looking at the family's condition. We need to own up the family. I don't say that this is something very unique, but I always felt that this is an approach which usually we miss out when we discuss in the board. Of course, by and by, we look from other companies, we look at what others have done, what is expected to be done, and we adapt it. But it is definitely a woman director or women directors bring a very different perspective in the board. The next thing which I would like to say is that women in the board makes a difference, but the research shows that unless and until the company is open and allow women to break the glass ceiling and take women in the senior positions, women directors alone cannot make a difference in the company's performance. Yes, board is a different aspect, but ultimate objective goal, objective is that company should perform well on all parameters. When we are talking about ESG, environment, social, and governance, perhaps women will play a more effective role as compared to male directors. What is required, I will request SHM or any association to organize training for women directors, prospective women directors, because I see the inhibition should go out immediately and more and more companies will now understand that gender diversity contributes very significantly in the performance of the firm. Therefore, women are not incapable. We see from different fields. We understand that women can contribute. They are straightforward. And perhaps they hold better values. I don't know whether that is the right term, but they hold values close to their heart, even in difficult situations. And therefore, more women directors in the company is much better. I can tell you that uh, in Maruti Udyuk, nothing about the board, they found that whether they can bring women in the shop floor, can they experiment with it, bringing engineers on the shop floor to manage the workforce. And they found that it was hugely effective, that experiment, because that makes the male more sober, respectful to women. Again, it comes from the culture of the society. Therefore, my urge to 
SOHM is, please organize training program for women directors and let us not discuss whether they are required in the board or not. They are required in the board, they will be required in the board and that is being filled by almost all board of directors. Thank you, Santos, for inviting me to speak and thanks. Thank you so much, sir, for your uh, kind address and uh, giving your perspective on the subject and also uh, your uh, this suggestion on uh, training of the women director. We will definitely take this forward. I um, would request for your uh, support and contribution in that uh, particular activity as well. Sure, so, sure, sir. So, so I am available. Thank you so much, sir. And now I I feel privileged of inviting honorable uh, guest of honor. Uh, Dr. Aruna Sharma, former Secretary Steel and Ministry of Electronic and IT, Government of India, and she is a mem former member of Digitizing Committee of RBI. I invite and uh, welcome you, ma'am. I hand over the mic to you, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think my co-panelist, Mr. Haldia and Mr. Bhattacharya has made my job very, very convenient and easy with the clarity of understanding. And let me start off with the note by making it very, very clear that when we are talking of women in the board of directors, they are the ones who are coming with their own competencies. Because when some women is being considered, if you look at the legal and statutory side, then there may not be a listed qualification. There may not be uh, anything which uh, sort of prescribes. But then everything applies when you appoint any other director to the board. So in the sense that level of competency is expected of the women who are imbibed into the directors. And in many of the boards where I'm also a member, I've seen that they are on par as far as the sector knowledge is concerned, as far as the subject knowledge is concerned, and that is what they bring in. Having said I will put it that man, women director is more focusing on the independent director. So in the sense, you do get a variety of women who are capable of going ahead with it and who are capable of delivering into it. So if you look at the Companies Act or if you look at the SEBI mandate, which has been given, they are looking for the independent director so that your choice is widened when you're going ahead with it. And you are in a position to pick up a very, very capable kind of a woman when you're working upon it. Then when you go on ahead on this, the third thing which I like to bring in, that to get competent women in the board, it's also the executive directors we are looking forward who should come up from the ranks of the company. And that will happen when we start off right from step one from recruitment to employment to opportunities to them so that they are able to climb the ladder and reach to the executive director's level in the board at various levels where the company or the sector you are working. It is really fantastic to know today that in India, even though the percentage is 17%, we had a time where you had lots, it's women who were heading old important banks was the women who were heading many of the major departments in the government. It was women who were heading many of the companies or entrepreneurships which was coming forward. The percentage may be small, but then that path was on. And as far as India is concerned, where they got the voting rights along with men in 1947, they equally got rights for employment and education along with it. Now it is the societal, the individuals who all contributed along with the family for these women to come up and then become active participant into whatever sector they were working at. Even in a very uh, non-women kind of a sector like steel, you will be surprised to know the number of women who are working on shop floor, number of women who are <clears throat> risen to the levels of the board and we have CMDs also of a public sector company as well as in a private sector company. So these are the women which has come up on their own. And that is very important key, which my co-panelist also said it very, very clearly, that competence is a must. When you reach the higher level, the people don't look at you as a man or a woman. They look at you as a competent person who is occupying the post in the board, which is going to look at the welfare and the growth of the company. 
so therefore that competence is to be brought in and where like what mr bhattacharya said you can fill the gaps by bringing in the training to them by maybe building in the confidence by and and uh, this iod and others are doing it where they expose them to apply the companies uh, act uh, uh, web web page for them to be picked up into the various board of directors depending on competence and when the word diversity is used we need financial experts in the board we need uh, uh, the empathy of the women she may be a financial expert also the sector all expert we want we want a chartered accountant also in the board so that is the kind of a diversity one is looking at it is not just gender or ethnic diversity that is being talked about so this competence of rising the ladder is very very important when they are climbing the steps and the story starts right from step 1 of getting more and more women into as a workforce the entire step because more they rise the ladder and as they rise the ladder the competence increases and they are capable to be in the board either executive directors or independent directors as the story may be so this is very very important when we are moving ahead and when we are looking at the competence of the women director having said of equity and capability yes the women officers do bring in a separate angle of empathy that is something inbuilt with them a uh, multitasking is inbuilt with them and that goes a very long way for them to bring in that extra touch into the decision making when they are moving ahead there was a mention by the panelist when they were talking about the the family women joining the force in one or two companies i have found this family women doing a fantastic job in the esg and the csr sectors plus they are also taking care very very well of the welfare of the employees and that what we found during covid the companies who did hold hand of their employees who took care of their vaccination who ensured nothing went wrong they were the first one to come in the weaker they were the first one to recover and that is and so now there is a need to expose these family ladies also who are from the promoters family to be exposed to the good examples of their own colleagues who have done a great job into their respective family industries by indulging into these kind of activities and strongly bringing in that angle to the decision making or the style of working of the company when we are going ahead and you see many of their interviews coming and floating in the newspapers and you can see the change which they have brought in so you have a pool of women directors who by competence coming as a dependent director you have a pool who will be coming as executive directors and you have a pool who will be coming from the promoters family so all these three is a ripe clientele to be exposed with the training to be exposed with more knowledge of what good is happening across the country and how as not a woman and definitely no question of quota all these women has come up on their own and this one one mandatory quota has been built up to ensure that that thought process starts off when your turnover is 100 crores plus or uh, turn crore turnover is 300 crores plus and share capital is 100 crores plus so that you do bring in and if you are a listed company you do have women director because that is also a representative of how much women you are recruiting and how much women you have in rank and file into your entire system so that is what makes a difference so when you are looking at it i think this jam has been when organically these women are coming and they are coming up very strongly the law supports it the law makes one mandatory so one and it has proven these single women which has joined various boards they have no more decorative piece or just to fulfill the law they bring in lot of knowledge lot of empathy lot of uh the, the 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 system knowledge the sector knowledge for the board decision making they are definitely on par and at that seniority and level that is what is expected out of them and that is the way we have to look at them now uh the the european union or the uk telling about 37 to 40% of women well we have to again i will repeat by saying we will have to get step one 
we don't have that kind of a participation of women's workforce into the companies today. Definitely not. And that is like a uh, the, the pyramid where the numbers keep on reducing as they start, as you start going at the higher level. So it, the work has to start right at the base of the pyramid if we are looking forward for a more, more participative structure and more women who are qualified and being available when we are reaching this level. Yes, the horizon in front of us, where the law is in support, where the companies are in support, the regulatory authorities are in support, and you are slowly getting a pool of women who are capable and qualified to occupy that pace and bring in that competence into the entire working and functioning of it. So I will say that SOCHAM should focus on these three subclass of women who are participating into decision making of the company and definitely also start monitoring the intake of women as it is going up into the various non-traditional kind of industries. Like I gave you an example of steel, I gave you an example of aluminum, the, with the shop floor work, where shop floor is there. It's not the desk job like an IT industry, where these women are coming up very well and very, very strongly. And I'll say good, most welcome. Or if you want me to elaborate on something else, most welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your uh, kind words and sharing perspectives of the steel sector industry and um, many more such things which are of relevance to the you know participants attending over here. And um, uh, while uh, we will be moving forward. Uh, we may like to have some, uh, you know, discussion uh, in between if uh, there are any questions with Dr. Shokalya, sir, Ashish Bhattacharya and Madam Arunaji uh, before moving for the you know, other panel discussion. Uh, just a small question which I am received of from the participant side. Uh, if Madam uh, may kindly, you know, enlighten with your uh, expert, uh, you know, how on the subject, ma'am. Uh, the question uh, that seeks to know uh, what could be the most prominent challenges behind women barrier to enter the board. Uh, that's one thing. And another question comes that uh, when we talk about the women's participation on corporate boards, uh, more likely uh, there is possibility uh, where, where we, we are talking about the you know listed companies. Uh, and uh, when we are talking about listed companies, then at the uh, another side we are ignoring the unlisted companies, which comprised of the you know bigger size in all together putting together. If we look at the number of the unlisted companies, so uh, how do you think that uh, this unlisted uh, segment of the companies are the potential more than you know uh, in a way where the listed companies they, they have already onboarded the women participants. And uh, how would you like to, you know, uh, guide the more women participants over here and they can aspire to uh, take their role and uh, participate on the boards of the unlisted companies as well? And what would you suggest for the government to look at as a fresh uh, in this okay. segment? Okay, let me put it this way that uh, the first question first, uh, what are the impediments to enter the board of directors? Definitely your competence, like if you are competent in your sector, you will be respected. And as you climb the ladder, you must have seen that people stop looking at you from the gender point of view. They look at you as a competent colleague who is working and handling the sector very, very well. So that's the sure shot entry gate for the board of directors. Uh, there is no other shortcut for it. So you can't demand it just because you are a woman or you can't expect it that it will be given on a platter. So there is definitely no impediments, but the competence, your competence goes a long way. And we have a long list of such successful people who have done a great job. Coming to your second question, what you have said is, besides the listed company, it is very, very clear, those who have a turnover of 300 crores and those who have a share capital of 100 crores are also to have one women director when you are going ahead with it. So that is a second stage which has been inbuilt in the law. And third is definitely which come below that. 
so which are coming below that you know their whole requirement itself is small they can have just two board of directors in the company or five board of directors in the company but good governance models many of these small companies are looking forward for a women director into their company so they may be smaller in size the law may not be mandating it to for them to have it but as a good governance practices they and diversity what was mentioned they are bringing in the women of uh, maybe many a times uh, somebody who is good at hr or somebody who is good in the sector or good in the finance are being brought in and the board of directors as a governance model the law does not say so for them to bring and what santosh has said that should government also bring in a law well they can dilute that numbers a little down what they put the the benchmarks of 300 crores and 100 crores that can be brought down a little below but then that should follow by creating more and more competent people in the market when we are going ahead with it and now that uh, the governance is being focused at then definitely that will make a difference because 100 crore share capital is a very small amount if you look at the industry size today uh, it's it's not a very big amount and rest will fall under msmes or uh, smes and those kind of sectors where uh, you know they they don't have a board of directors for that matter or even if they have uh, after a size uh, it is more like a pro the promoters who are a md or the senior person if they are a little big size so i think we have to wait for bringing down this uh, uh, the benchmarks or the threshold levels a little more below because i think 100 and 300 is is good enough at this moment of time you are mute santosh you are mute thank you ma'am uh... thanks for answering this question to participants and uh, liking us and there is one more question uh, coming across and if i may request dr ashu kaldia sir and uh, dr patacharya sir to please also join uh, with ma'am for this please if you can make your am on uh, as we generally you know uh, consider that women uh, if they are at as a homemaker they are uh, they, they most of the times prove uh, you know better risk managers uh and 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 if we look at while uh, considering their capabilities as a risk manager uh what are the uh, you know possibilities in case if women uh, you know dominate on the boards their position could be risky in some ways where the recent most examples that the uh, the economy has seen in one or other matters where the women led the boards and uh, there was you know uh, some ways not expected by the stakeholders which happened um, <laughs> so how do you take this question and what could be your uh, answers well i will say that person did it because that person was person it was irrespective of whether it was a woman or a man the mess they created in by chairing that board or allowing illegal practices i'm sure they would have done it even if their gender was different or even if they were transgender for all you know it was their personality which was creating a problem and that way you will find it everywhere you will find it everywhere yes you have two three bad examples of women who were at the helm of affairs and who took some wrong decisions but law has taken its course the best part is law has taken its course as it would have taken for the men folk or if they were not women and if they were even though i think they will come down equally vociferously it's only this because they were women it made much more headlines than anything else uh, my colleagues can add on to that please may we have comments from ashok haldia sir and uh, ashi sir from uh, for this question any additions haldia ji haldia please yes uh, i think uh, the first thing is that uh, Uh, to your earlier question of entry of the women on the board through the law or the best practices, I would believe that the trade and industry association should take the lead to come to come out with the best practice code. The law has already provided for a one female director on a certain class of companies, as Mr. Marcel. 
but I would believe that the industry association should take the lead, come out with the best practice report, and say that the time has come that we, we increase from one to three, one to four, or whatever, and, and encourage their members to adhere to that 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 best practice. The second thing is that we need to uh, we need to create uh, that uh, that 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 leadership attribute into pro, uh, into the women which are professional. Which are, who are who are technocrats to be able to come on the board, become a visionary, be, take a leadership position at the board. When that when that happens and they are able to display, I'm sure uh, the uh, the well-meaning boards would take cognizance of that and put the women direct women uh, directors on the board. The third thing is the nomination and remuneration committee. The boards of the corporate should give that mandate or that guidelines to the uh, nomination and remuneration committee to increase them that irrespective of the law, they should not discriminate. If they find the women directors to be, uh, to, uh, to be competent and capable, they should prefer the women director than, the, than their male counterpart. So that would be my first suggestion as to how to increase more and more uh, women uh, participation on the board. Uh, the second question in terms of uh, the law, whether that should be relaxed or liberalized further, I would believe no, not, not required. Accepting, uh, in, in accepting one more clause can be added that the corporates uh, which have the bank borrowing more than say 50 crores or 100 crores, they should also have a one woman director. I'm, I'm seeing it from a perspective of public interest because in those, we, we should be more concerned about the companies where there there is a public interest involved, and as and and as uh, Ashiji said, that we should not take this as a woman representation as a woman empowerment. We should take it as a bringing diversity on the board, and the diversity, gender diversity is only one of that aspect. There are various other diversities to be brought on the board. Maybe ethnic diversity, geographical di diversity, the expertise diversity, the age diversity, and so on and so forth. So women, women, uh, the gender diversity is only one of one of those. And the, your last question is that about uh, uh, you know the women being the best as a housewife, and I I think uh, uh, that's a misnomer. I don't think there is anything in the management that you can't learn from a housewife, from your mother, or from your wife. Uh, and you you name any new terminology in the management books, and I would say yes, your 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 mother, your wife suggests that, that that talent and that capabilities and she's better place to manage those conflict situations, stress situations, conflict situations and so on and so forth, ethical, ethic, ethical conflicts and so on and so forth. So I would believe that that we should not be guided by and uh, you know uh, in terms of some of the corporates headed by the women uh, going into wrong direction I think that's again a uh, wrong fallacy or wrong example to draw that can happen with anybody you know there could be error of judgment there could be greed element involved in the in the, in the men directors as well as the women directors so that's not the issue and that i think that that is not that 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 relevant in that perspective so thank you very much over to you ashish okay thank you well dear ji uh first of all i must say that uh, as I told actually that usually the societal expectation comes first and the law is created next. That if you look at the evolution of law. But in this case, the ecosystem was needed to be created. And therefore the law was brought in. Almost a decades back, if you see, when the company law first came in with women directors, 2013, then 8% of the directors in India were women directors. Law has not said, you increase it to 17% or you increase it to 20%. It has increased because the law creates an ecosystem. And when people understand that bringing women in the board makes sense and they identify the right woman director, they will bring in the board right woman directors. Therefore, whether law is to be changed, I don't think it is required now. Because if you change the law and increase the number of women directors, Perhaps again, it will be ticking the box because if you can't find the right number of women directors, it will be difficult. You just tick the box. And I will go what Dr. Sharma has said that you 
empower women you you include women in the senior positions in the companies and that's why you are creating a pool of women directors not only for your company but for other companies as well that is going to happen and the question is creating the advocacy awareness what associm is doing now this kind of deliberation this kind of discussion is creating awareness and people will start thinking yes good points were made why not experiment with it therefore i don't think law is required coming back to the uh, women as uh, haldia ji has said that every management can be learned from mothers grandmothers and wives and sisters i am a teacher in the management for last 30 years and i can tell you today we are talking about emotional intelligence is a very important component of a manager look at your family who is more emotionally intelligent women members of your family and therefore it is not the question of who has the leadership quality women has the leadership quality the way they manage the relationship with the society with the relatives with the children and their parent father exceedingly well with daughter is in law mother in law what not i don't want to give examples but the managing relationship which we feel today with the management and say that emotional intelligence is most important then look at yourself look at women they are not to be taught about it there are exceptions of course as it is exception everywhere as regards private limited company i i feel that no law should be brought in the reason being ease of doing business in a small business where public money is not invested why should we impose a law on them if they find that women directors are useful in the board they will bring women directors so don't complicate create ease of doing business don't burden the private limited companies where investment comes from family friend vcs and others and say that you run your business the way you want to run therefore i don't think that law should be brought in for private limited companies thank you santosh for giving me thank the you opportunity thank you so much sir uh, now before inviting uh, mr co chairman uh, vijay sisdeva ji i would uh, just request uh, with permission that uh, my colleague uh, ms ritima is here to make small announcement as adarwaja is requested her to you know participate and uh, you know convey the message that she has um, otherwise i was extra to this you know forum uh, five plus five i was in making it 11th mail so uh, requested my colleague to make an announcement and again balance it out so uh, over to you ritima if you can please uh, you know uh, apprise of what the information you possess thank you so much sir for the opportunity so as the chan as the chairman lines of the webinar has decided to come out with a compendium comprising of distinguished contribution made by women directors on board so uh, the intent of the compendium is to recognize the distinct work that is being undertaken by women on board of listed entities in india the compendium shall further sensitize the role and importance of women on the board and create an aspiring impact on many women who aspire to be part of the board or hold key managerial positions so in furtherance we are inviting the nominations in a prescribed performer with the testation of such information by the promoters or the key managerial persons of different entities across india and uh, detailed information shall also be shared with all of you post the session the individuals are free to share the compendium information in their corporate networks thank you ritima for uh, um, making this announcement over here uh, now may i request mr vijay sasdeva to please uh, propose uh, the vote of thanks for this inaugural session and then we will be moving for the you know uh, panel discussion with uh, uh, participation of all the panelists who have joined absolutely so uh, thank you saltosh and uh, i think it was a very wonderful session and uh, we got uh, valuable insights from various members and and i believe the discussion went all the it, it took all the curves it went bit intense it went bit on capabilities competence and maturity but uh, just to add to what we were discussing and i was very passionately hearing uh, aruna ma'am Uh, Mr. Bhattacharya, Dr. Haldi, and so on. So, just to add uh, two lighter points there, the topics which came over 
So Mr. Bhattacharya mentioned about uh, the emotional intelligence, which is a very important topic these days. So let me quote uh, 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 a piece of knowledge which I hold with me is that the marriage age in India is 21 years for a boy and 18 years for the girl. The reason being is that a girl at the age of 18 is equally or maybe more mature than a man who's at the age of 21. <laughs> so when we talk about emotional intelligence or acumen or uh, uh, maturity, if I may say as a word, uh, women definitely have an edge there both biologically as well as as recognized by the law which determines the age of uh, uh, marriage, uh, so as to say. And second lighter example, which I can say is that a topic got mentioned in the discussion somewhere. I think it came from uh, one of the questions by one of the uh, viewers about risk management. I think uh, I was thinking about it and the biggest example of risk management, what I could think in life is giving birth. Because when uh, a person is giving birth, uh, the, the, the life of the person who's giving birth itself is on risk. So, and that authority and that capability is also given by almighty to a woman. So I think no, 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 no women can be a less risk manager or can handle risk. Somebody who's given birth uh, to a new life. So, uh, as I said, on a lighter note, these were the two uh, thoughts that I, I thought I must share here. And with this, uh, uh, thank you uh, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Aruna Sharma. Uh, thank you, uh, Sri Ashish Bhattacharya ji. Thank you, our, uh, our mentor, our friend, our guide always, CA Dr. Ashok Kaldiya sir, for sharing your uh, views, Mr. Basudev Mukherjee. And uh, uh, let me also extend this thanks uh, very well suited for this topic here that the chairperson of our national law committee, which has organized this event uh, with, with all the hard work Santosh and the team has put, is also a women. So we also thank you all on behalf of Ms. Preeti Malhotra, the chairman of committee, uh, which is behind this event today. So thank you once again. And uh, uh, we hope that uh, all the viewers will enjoy a wonderful panel discussion which is now following after their organization. session. Thank you once again to all the panel members and to all the viewers. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vijay Sajdevaji for your kind concluding remarks and proposing vote of thanks uh, to the eminent guests and speakers of the inaugural session. Uh, I would like to uh, hand over the mic to Dr. Ashok Haldia, sir, and take the proceeding of the uh, technical session, panel discussion. Uh, in your chairmanship of this uh, session, uh, we shall be shortly joined by Ms. Sadia Ilmi and Ms. Hira Hiru Mir Chandaniji. Uh, we have already joined by Ms. Sonal Matu and uh, CA Dr. Uh, CA uh, Deepa Garwalji. She has joined with us, and uh, Dr. S K Gupta sir he is very much there. We welcome all of you, and hand over the mic to Ashok Haliya sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you, Shantoshji, and uh, welcome once again to the technical or the panel discussions. Uh, we have a distinguished panelist, uh, Ms. Sonal Matthew, Ms. Sajia Ilmi, and Dr. S. K. Gupta, Ms. Deepa Agarwal, and Mr. Rumi Sandani. Uh, I have ex expressed my viewpoint, my thought process on the topic in the inaugural session, and that was also uh, had a very enriched contribution by Mr. Ashish Bhattacharya and Mr. Sharma Sharma. So I would like to be brief in the beginning and then maybe as we proceed, and I, I know we have only 15 minutes to time and with the five panelists. So as a chairperson, I will take the liberty to be, uh, to be very brief, having already stated in the inaugural session. And then when I feel that I know something on the topic, I would chip in using my privilege being a chairperson of these of the panel discussions. I would chip in and where I would feel that I do not know this topic or the subject, I would I would evade those uh, those uh, those panel discussions. So that's uh, uh, with that. Uh, let me uh, invite first uh, in the beginning with Solan Matu. And uh, you know this webinar uh, is focusing on. Uh, the uh, human representation on the board. And we know what we are talking human representation to bring the diversity of the board. 
not as women empowerment. Women empowerment is important. But then we are talking about managing the corporates, managing the interface of the corporates with the rest of the world. We are looking the issues relating to uh, uh, ESG, sustainable development, the climate change, the challenges and the opportunities that the corporate do face. And we are looking women's placement or women's representation at that board to be able to contribute to the challenges and the opportunities that the Indian boards are faced with. And from that perspective, the topics for the webinars is what is women's representation of the board? What does it mean? What does it mean for the corporates? What does it mean for the women themselves? How competent, how caliber they have to be on the board of the Indian corporates in a changing context and the changing dynamics. What has been their experience so far? We have human directors being the, on, the, on the panel. What has been their experience on their role and ability to contribute their, their role and the ability in terms of the qualities, the caliber that they possess and in, ter in terms of the opportunities or the, or the, uh, or the uh, you know, environment that they get at the boardroom to contribute the, 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 the facilitation or the, by the chairman and the ecosystem in the board and the around the board to enable them to contribute at the board effectively. And what does it mean in terms of being, in terms of enabling more women representation on the board beyond the legal requirement? What are the bottlenecks? What are the stumbling blocks on entering into the board? Despite the women have been able to display their caliber, their competence, in all walk of the life, be the professions, be the technical, be the science, be the society, be, be the politics, be the, be, be, be the societal aspects, what that has not enabled the women to find a rightful place on the Indian boards. These are the issues and the challenges. And then finally, what the role we expect from the government to play, including should there be a, 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 a provision in the law that there should be more than one woman director. If one is not enough, we need more than one. And why we need more than one? And if the law is not required for that, then what the other stakeholders need to do, corporate themselves, the nomination remuneration committees, the board themselves, the trade and industry association as was well, saying, do they need to bring out the best practice code, saying that the law provides for one, but why they should not have more than 20%, 25%, at least to begin with, the movement representation. And when we look at the diversity of the board, the, the, the gender diversity is only one. Within that gender diversity, how can we build in the other elements of the diversity? That could be age, that could be ethnic, that could be geographical, that could be experience and the expertise. So how to bring that diversity while ensuring the gender uh, gender diversity, all these issues we will be discussed. And we have a very distinguished panel. And I would start with Ms. Sonal Matu as to what is what is her what has been her experience and her thoughts on the human participation of the board. Thank you. Over to you, Ms. Sonal Matu. Uh, thank you, sir, and then good evening to all the participants. Uh, so I think very interesting because the statutory requirements of making it mandatory to have a woman on board was much required. Um, but I think that it's you don't only qualify as a board member because of your gender. Ms. Sonal, continue, please. We are not able to hear you. Sorry, sir. Am I audible? Yes, now. Now you are. Oh, okay. Uh, so, sorry, I was saying that it's not only being a woman that qualifies you to be a board member. I think the statutory requirements were very necessary to introduce the mandatory concept. Uh, but I think your primary role on the board is really to be uh, to be a representative of your shareholders to ensure that the board follows good governance 
Um, I'm not there as a board member to compete with my male colleagues. In fact, I think um, my big learning has been that my male colleagues may have multiple qualities and while I am in awe of them, uh, my role there is not to compete with them. My role is to become a better version of what I bring to the board. And uh, you don't have to have all the necessary expertise that are listed out. I, for instance, I struggle uh, with reading uh, PNL statements. I've learned them over the years, but that's not my skill and competency. And my skill and competency lies in uh, legal matters, in compliances, in ethics. Um, and that's what I'd like to concentrate on. So I, I do believe that it's not a question of just being a woman on the board. I think the question is you have to have the, the correct skill competency. You must recognize your role and the liability that it brings. But I think we are also living in a world where the reality is that there are still many companies that don't have women as board members and as independent board members. So I think that for those of us who are on the board, it is our responsibility to ensure that we empower more women. It is our responsibility that within the organization that we sit on the board of, uh, we ensure that there is a, a particular growth pattern and opportunities for our women colleagues and push the agenda of diversity within the organization. I'm very fortunate because uh, the majority of boards that I sit on has more than one woman director. So I think for us, it's never been a struggle, but I think that it's not a question of men versus women. It's a question of recognizing what your own skill and caliber is and bringing that to the board. Um, I've been very fortunate to have amazing co-directors with me on the board. I am in awe of their intelligence. I learn from them. I observe them. I watch them, but I'm not in competition with them. I, if anybody, I'm in competition with myself. And I think that's where the next level is that, you know, we've got to uh, stop coming from a mindset that we've got to compete with men. And I think those of us who are on the board and have this opportunity definitely need to push for more women coming on board with the right skill competency and creating a database of similar colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sonal. And you very rightly said, and in fact, that is the theme that every woman director, aspiring woman director should have, is that she's not there to compete. She's there to do herself. But at the same time, uh, when uh, in, the, in the ecosystem that we are at the moment, and unfortunately, despite the women have to have, have proved their caliber and competence all around, that, uh, you know, when a woman director comes on the board, she often feels that as, as if the entire board or the entire world is there looking at, is she competent? Would she be able to deliver? Would she be able to, uh, you know, live up to the challenges that the boardroom would require? But then you rightly said that every, every woman director, for that matter, every director should look in terms of the contribution that he or she can make, rather than looking for a male, male, male versus woman or from any other competitive perspective. So thank you very much. And while I, I know you have some urgent meetings and you may not, please, please be with us till the time permits and maybe you can participate in the panel discussion further. Or now coming to Mr. Gupta, what has been your experience you have been uh, in the professional bodies and currently also in a professional bodies. So what do you feel a professional, what challenges a professional feels in terms of particularly women professional in order to become to be a board member? What extra competence and caliber that a, that a professional in general would should have in order to become a very competent and a, and a board member? Over to you, Mr. Mead. Not able to hear you are muted, Mr. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, co panelists. Thank you, Santoshi, for having me here on this panel discussion. Actually, my PhD is in the area of corporate governance. I keep doing research with regard to corporate governance dimensions, and this being one of the important areas. I've done a bit of research, I've published papers on this theme, as well as a lot of other themes under corporate governance. Santoshi, if you allow, can I make a brief presentation within the time period given to me, if you allow me to share my brief presentation, which is based on the research which I have carried out. 
Uh, Gupta ji, you are most welcome, but you know we have other panel speaker also. So if you can complete your presentation in say five minutes time, that I will do better. within five minutes, sir. Yes, okay. Can I share, yes, surely, can sir. I share, yeah, can I share, please? Yes, sir. You have now sharing right, please. Okay, just a minute. <clears throat> so, you know that the world is changing in almost all dimensions. And I'm not only talking about the changes brought about by COVID-19 pandemic situation, but even otherwise, we see a lot of changes happening all around the world. And that probably calls for the change in the board also, the board structure, the board processes, the board composition, everything perhaps needs to undergo a change. Women constitute almost about 50% of the most geographical population groups but they are underrepresented in the boardrooms of various nations. According to a study, Norway has the highest number of women directors, followed by France at about 30%, Sweden at about 24%, Italy at about 22%, 22% China is at about 8.5%, and in the Indian market, probably maybe the number would have gone up since the date when I carried out this research, but definitely it's only around 12-15% as of now. Research also shows that there is a positive correlation with women on the board and the corporate performance. Research has shown that boards with high female representation experience, a high return on equity, high return on invested capital, and a high return on sales. That's because women bring a different set of perspectives they bring and they tend to have a different style of engagement, seeking the opinion of others, and they take decisions by considering the interest of multiple stakeholders. Positive changes, they bring positive changes to the boardroom. They're probably more orderly and systematic in terms of board process and board work, and they have more emotional intelligence as Professor Bhattacharyji was also mentioning a little while ago. We have carried out research and found out what is the real position in India so far as the experience of the women directors goes. I often feel that I'm not heard and that I need to put more effort into making sure that others hear and understand my point of view. That's a view of one of the women directors in respect of the research which I've carried out. Someone else said, I have to yell so that they are able to hear me. Someone else said, it's been a challenge earning respect and being treated as an equal member. As a woman, someone else said, as a woman, you have a longer road to build credibility. Someone else said, I have to establish my credentials over and over again and again. I'm always seen as the voice of the woman. I'm expected to hold the ethical compass for the board and lead only on women initiatives. But then what you need to do in order to become an effective team player, so as far as the board processes are concerned, try to learn, try to be open-minded, try to work hard to build up your capabilities and competencies which are required for effective member of the board. You must build your network. You must develop your influencing skills. You need to brush up your skills and knowledge. And above all, you should believe in yourself and be confident about what actually you can do. You must also enhance your commitment, courage, and communication skills. I think going forward, mentorship is a key. You have to have someone who can really mentor you up to a particular role of representing on the board. When women are ready and they are competent enough to join the various boards, their performance will speak for themselves. The message is loud and clear. Women are the emerging board catalyst. That's where I close. I'll come back if there are any questions from the audience at a later point of time. Thank you very much. Excellent, Mr. Gupta. Uh, Gupta ji, that's an excellent uh, Thank you, sir. brief, Thank brief you. presentation in three minutes. And you rightly said that there are inhibitions uh, on the women directors, but I would believe 
my own experience at the boards and uh, and working at the boardroom together with the women directors is that the feel that some of the women directors have expressed that goes with some of the male directors as well. They often feel that they are not heard well. They have to yell upon the chairman doesn't give them the justice or fair amount of time to uh, is address to the management that is doesn't take cognizance of or the management is bothered only about the government nominees or the promoter, uh, you know, the promoter nominees. That's the normal feel that when even when you are a male director on the board, you feel. But then effectively, as you said, that it is your caliber in your competence that that should be able to address to the uh, uh, to the challenges in the boardrooms and you group, you act like a friend, guide and philosopher. And a, and, a, and and a critic, a positive critic to the board. They should feel that you are able to guide them. You are not only an adversary, but you are also a friend, guide, and philosopher for them. And then you have the ability to stand up and say no to no, and 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 and, and are able to, you know, stand to your viewpoint. What may come. That's the feel. If you have, then certainly, whether you are a male or a female, you would be heard effectively at the boardroom level. Now with this, uh, Deepaji, can I uh, request you as to your experience being a professional and also dealing with the board, particularly when you deal with the with the with the audit committees and the boards on the on the audit and ethical or the or you know financial control matter is often said that the human brings uh, a lot of positivity in terms of the ethical compliance in terms of. Uh, uh, you know the the ESG in terms of the you know the uh, the prudence, the financial prudence at the boardroom level. So your experience, please. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And uh, first of all, uh, thank you, Santosh Shatan and SHM teams for inviting me. And a very good afternoon, my colleagues and my co-speakers. I think it's a very interesting session, and I'm uh, you know kind of uh, thrilled to hear everyone's views. So I think everyone is kind of talking about, you know, how important it is, uh, uh, the, the role of women director on the board and the perspective they bring on the table. I think I would like to bring start with the fact that well, I'm in the profession since last 20 years. So I've seen a different perspective always comes on table, whether you talk about the, uh, the, the women on board or whether you talk about any of the committees, whether you look at the any of the regulatory committee. I think uh, the gender diversity is something which always brings a different perspective on the table. And as I think my learned speaker mentioned that it's not just about the uh, gender, uh, gender diversity does not only mean the female representation, it, it's a larger issue, uh, bringing different perspectives on the table. So I think if I talk about my experience in profession, I think uh, I have seen a whole set of regulatory changes, uh, which has started uh, from the Companies Act 2013 dating uh, women director on the board of the unlisted companies meeting certain threshold and followed by the listed companies wherein the top thousand listed companies have to have a board of director a women board of director i think one very important thing which i have learned and i have i practically what i believe is as a women colleague be uh, you are on the board which sonal uh, uh, my colleague sonal mentioned we need to support the female colleagues. We need to provide them the right career guidance and uh, you know show them the right career path. I think that is something very important. We should encourage more and more women colleagues to to join the profession, to join the board. So uh, th there are various studies, and uh, Professor Gupta has already made a very fantastic presentation. So while I'll not repeat the numbers here or the or the studies, which goes to show that women are are very important to you know they bring a different perspective on the table and and they are very good at multitasking so so you will see a lot of studies where the company's performance has improved significantly uh, there is a substantial improvement in performance when when you look at the uh, the numbers when you look at the percentages when you look look at the returns uh, you know, uh, and, and the business case for women on board is very compelling. Uh, a growing body of evidence shows that women's participation in decision making is positively correlated with the financial performance of companies. Um, uh, in, in, in my experience, I've seen, you know, uh, uh, women definitely uh, because the, the women colleagues are mandatory on the board. That's one point. But otherwise, also, they, they bring a very different perspective to the table. But a very important key to address is, you know, what are the bottlenecks and how can that be addressed by the by the corporates and by the 
uh, by the regulators and by the others. So I think the key three uh, key challenges which the women still face is more about the uh, the, the family responsibilities wherein probably uh, they need the right guidance or the push and, and breaking the gender stereotypes and the masculine corporate culture. I think that is something very uh, important to address. And uh, uh, in, in fact, in Asia, 30% of the business leaders surveyed said many or most of the women at mid-career or senior levels who left their jobs did so vol voluntarily because of family commitments. So I think that is something which I see uh, not just in the in the uh, companies, but otherwise in the profession also, when women start moving up the ladder, they definitely give up because of the family responsibilities and commitments. So there is a need for support and change by cooperators and regulators, and especially by the women colleagues. Uh, building a strong pipeline of female talent is the key to promoting more women on the boards. Companies can attract and retain by following multiple policies, for example, the flexi uh, working challenges, uh, the top level commitment is, is a must, is critical in creating a sustainable and meaningful change towards increasing women's participation on boards. Uh, the, the other thing is, I think one very important thing is which every company should look into is creating a real mentorship and sponsorship schemes. Um, I, I have seen many women colleagues who are just want to, you know, do uh, still they are pursuing many courses. They want to be geared up for the next level when, uh, you know, the other speaker mentioned about are they competent enough? Yes. I think if, if we start giving them the right guidance, the right resources, the right platform to network, the networking opportunities, it's very important, uh, you know, they, they will be definitely be increasing in the number. And we will not be talking about the, you know, this gap of the gender diversity. Uh, so, so I think this is all what I would just want to mention, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Haldia. So, but if there's anything which I can add, uh, please let me know. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Deepa, and, for, and particularly for pointing out the challenges that the women director face. But then despite those challenges, we see many women directors, successful women directors, those have led the corporates. Those have been very effective. At the at the at the board level, and uh, we have a very seasoned director on the board, Ms. Neel Chandani, and welcome to you, Ms. Neel Chandani. And uh, you know, in the in the inaugural session and in the panel discussion also, we discussed about the need for the law to prescribe the minimum number so as to say the reservations for the human directors. Now, as of now, we have one. Now, should we have more than one? Is that good enough to bring the diversity at the board level to make the Indian board competent, effective, futuristic? Or do we need to do something more than that? And even when there is a woman reservation on the board as per the law, we find many companies without the board, without the women directors. What does it mean? It just mean the reluctance on the part of the promoters or the board members to bring the women directors. And we see even if there are many women directors, are the feminine women directors. I'm not saying if they are competent, they should be, but there are who are simply because they are family members and need to have a woman director on the board. They are on the board. Now, if we need to increase the number, what do we need to do? What are the challenges that the women director face in terms of the entry at the board level and then at the board level functioning itself? Because, as I said in the beginning and at the, in the inaugural session, Mr. Ashish Bhattacharya pointed out that we are not looking in terms of empowerment. We are looking in terms of diversity. And diversity, not mere gender diversity. It could be, uh, uh, you know, diversity, gender diversity, with the, within that, the ethnic, uh, the experience, the age, the geographical diversity. Now, what are those, you know, blocks or the barriers that the human director face and how that can be overcome? And how has been your experience of working on the board? Over to you, Ms. Vichandani. You are muted, Ms. Vichandani. You are muted. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for this opportunity to engage in this dialogue on a subject which is very, very close to my heart. I've served on more than 10 boards, diverse boards, and been on board now for eight years. So before I plunge into some of the questions that have been asked, I just want to respond to a few comments that uh, 
the other uh, distinguished speakers uh, made. Um, I think uh, uh, Mr. Gupta shared some of the findings of his study. And I would add one point uh, that would benefit uh, women directors and new independent directors immensely to make a successful board is to have an inclusive board, to have an inclusive chairperson who creates the space and environment for the new board member, male or female, to contribute effectively. Uh, there were some comments on some of the inadequacies that women directors uh, express, you know, about their voice not being heard. And um, the, Mr. Hazia rightly said that sometimes even male directors who bring in diverse perspectives feel that their voice is not being heard. I think here again, an inclusive board and particularly an inclusive chair of the board or chair of the committee does matter. So it's not only about diversity, but it's also about inclusion because I have heard comments from board members about some effective women directors and some of the things I've heard about effective women directors on boards is she comes well prepared because she's so well prepared. Even we have to read everything and come well prepared is what one I heard one board member say about a woman director once. Another director said, she brings unique perspectives to the table, which make us reflect on issues deeply, and that enriches the dialogue to bring about a more holistic, balanced decision at the board level. Another uh, woman director I heard of, the, her colleagues around the boardroom said, she's confident and willing to challenge status quo. So I guess there are uh, two sides to it. And uh, there are not so confident board members, men and women, and there are very confident board members and effective board members, men and women. And I think NRCs and boards have to really think deeply about the composition of their boards. But the subject that I plan to speak on today, based on my 38 years of corporate experience, 30 as an operational manager and eight on boards, I intend to speak on some of the enabling factors that have got women on boards, some of the stumbling blocks, what I advise potential women directors and even male in the, uh, potential directors on how they can get onto boards. And last of all, which is the theme of this subject of this meeting, responsible corporate boards and therefore how effective board members can deliver good standards of corporate governance. So what are some of the enabling factors? I think in India, one of the greatest enabling factors, the word starts, it's a big bad word, starting with the word Q, letter Q, which is quotas. I think um, before the Companies Act 2013 came into being, there were only 5% women directors on Indian boards. And today as we speak, I'm very happy to share that we have over 17% women directors on boards, one seven. And I'm pretty sure that in 2023 and 24, when there will be a big churn on boards, the percentage of women on boards is only going to increase further. What is the other enabling factor? I think there are very, very enlightened boards that uh, understand and value the diversity, the va value diversity on their boards. In fact, one of the boards I joined recently in their brief to the headhunter, they categorically said that all things remaining equal, they wanted a second woman director on their board. So there are clearly uh, some of the women directors who are on boards are making an impact and companies are recognizing that uh, women directors bring different perspectives, different experiences, different skills, different leadership traits, and that enables the board to take holistic a more balanced decision making, which leads to the financial uh, improvement, uh, which some of my other uh, speakers just spoke of. Um, it, this, I, I, mentioned, uh, I mentioned about enlightened boards. Increasingly, the conversation around ESG, the G in the ESG includes governance, which is a very important aspect, and diversity on boards 
is a very important dimension of um, governance. And right, like Mr. Haldia said, diversity includes gender, age, ethnicity, skills, experience, knowledge, education, geography, whole lot of aspects, which maybe we can cover another time. But definitely gender diversity is an important perspective. And many large investors across the world, whether it's Carlyle or BlackRock or Goldman Sachs and many institutional advisory firms in India and abroad are voting against boards that don't have diversity and don't have gender diversity on their boards. And they are there, investors are there for returns to stakeholders. So obviously there is value of diversity and there is value of gender diversity that is forcing them to mandate more diversity on boards, more gender diversity on boards, and therefore better ESG scores. So these are some of the enabling factors. Now, what are the stumbling blocks? And here I quote from a FTSE 350 research done by uh, run, uh, done in an interviews with chairs of companies of some FTSE companies, some of the reasons given for fewer women on boards, and I quote here, there aren't any women with the right credentials and depth of experience to sit on boards, said one enlightened chairperson. My advice to that board and NRC would be fish in a different pond. Don't only look for retired CEOs and retired bureaucrats. Today, women bring not only gender diversity, but also age diversity. Research of board members in India shows that women directors are nearly 10 years younger than male independent directors. So clearly, fish in a different pond. Another FTSE chairperson said, all good women have already been snapped up. I would say again, fish in a different pond. You don't need to necessarily have a director who already serves on six listed boards to join yours. Look for women with digital skills, cyber skills, e-commerce skills, and some of these skills which don't exist on boards today. Look for women directors who bring in uh, knowledge and experience from the sector that you're operating in, and you don't need to necessarily have retired people. Another FTSE chairperson said, there aren't any vacancies at the moment. I would think of appointing a woman director if there are any vacancies. Guess what? The good news in India is that 2023 and 24, when uh, the two um, terms of many independent directors come to an end, there will be a huge amount of vacancies coming up for independent directors. So we don't really need to wait for the board to have a vacancy to bring in an independent woman director on the board. In fact, one of the boards I joined recently, because they are expecting a lot of their senior independent directors to retire by 24, they have already started their succession planning process and I was recruited onto that board as a part of the succession planning process so that suddenly in 23, 24, when all the senior independent directors finish their two terms, the board doesn't have a vacuum of leadership of independent directors. Then there was another FTSE director who said, I don't think women fit comfortably in a board environment. And I don't think that guy is completely updated because I regularly meet women directors. And I'm sure ASOCHEM also must be getting a lot of queries from women who want to take on positions on boards. So that I think uh, the right women who are interested in board positions and ready to take on board positions is something that probably that FTSE chairperson needed to meet. Another quote, there are a whole lot of quotes, but last one that I'd say, um, another chair said, most women don't want the hassle and pressure of sitting on boards. So there are liabilities uh, of say, serving on boards and those apply to both men and women. And uh, it is an informed decision that independent directors take before joining boards. And there is a huge pipeline of directors, women directors who want to join boards. So now the next question, how to get there? I was very fortunate. Uh, I, I mean, most of the boards that I've joined, I didn't know anybody on that board. 
So I got recruited through headhunters. I got recruited through people who had seen my name, having joined the board of Nilkamal in 2014. The information was available in the public domain. And there are some boards that I don't know how I got on there. I just got a call from their company secretary or senior member of the management team, and I was interviewed, and that's how I got onto the board. How could other people get onto boards? One, of course, the old fashioned network, network, network. Let everybody you know, let them know that you're interested in a board position. Self assess yourself, see the profiles of other board members of good well-run companies, <laughs> see where you fit in, see what skills you can bring onto the table, see whether if you need to reskill yourself. You have to be able to protect the interest of all stakeholders, including shareholders. So having financial acumen and ability to read P&Ls and annual reports and balance sheets is a skill I think all board members must have, not only the audit committee members. So reskill yourself either by joining training programs, joining workshops like this, uh, uh, reading in the newspapers about stories of good governance and poor governance, talking to board members and learning from their experiences. So these are some things that you can do. And um, uh, I I'm sure if, if you're committed enough to this, either a headhunter or somebody from a board that's looking for an independent woman director will reach out to you. And once you're on the board, how do you stay effective? Again, keep up to date with the practices in governance, with the regulations in the field, learn from workshops, training programs, news media reports, other board members, keep upgrading your skills, learn to speak up, even if you have a point of view which is very different from that of others. In fact, learn to speak up confidently, even more so if you have a very, very diverse point of view. And if you have the right logic in place, the right wisdom in place, um, and an inclusive board that supports you, I'm sure your voice will be heard confidently and clearly. Uh, and when you join a board, learn about the business, learn about the people, learn about the other board members, um, keep skilling yourself and make sure that you continue to represent the interests of all stakeholders. That's customers, employees, society, environment, regulators, shareholders, um, and all other stakeholders whose voice you represent on the board. So that's what I want to say. Mr. Halvia asked me a question about whether one and done is enough. One woman on board is enough. I don't think it is enough. There's enough research to show that for any diverse voice to be heard more clearly, more than one and ideally one third of the composition of a, of a particular diverse voice brings the greatest value to the board and which is why many Scandinavian countries have a one third, minimum one third representation of each gender on the board. So one and done is certainly not good enough. I'll stop here and I'm happy to take questions uh, whenever the panel opens up for discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Nisandani, for your el elaborate presentation and sharing your experience of uh, what are the stumbling blocks, what value the women director sets, and uh, what is the best way to bring the women directors on the board and how to make their role more effective. Now, we have been joined by another distinguished panelist, Ms. Alia Elmi, who is, the, who is on the board of many companies and who bring with her the perspective of her being uh, you know, an independent director and also we would request her to share her experience as to her experience on the boards of the Indian corporates and how effective her women directors have been on the boards, what challenges they face or she has faced from her practical experience. Over to you, Ms. Anjali. Uh, sir, I think uh, Ms. Shajelmi has lost the connection. So as soon as she joins back, I will just apprise to you. In the meantime, you may please continue with the questions. Uh, I mean, the panelists, sir. Okay. Do you have questions, sir? Satosh, do you see questions? Yeah, uh, okay. we do have a few questions. Um, okay, you will be ready with that. But then, then let me uh, let 
me ask the panelist. Uh, we have Ms. Deepa, Ms. Gupta, and uh, Ms. P. Chandan available with us. I believe Ms. Sona has left. Uh, so uh, we go back to, uh, you know, Ms. Deepa Agrawal in terms of, uh, you know, have you found the women directors on the audit committee? And what has been your experience of interacting with the women directors, member of the audit committee, in terms of financial prudence and in terms of, you know, empowering the auditors mm -hmm. and also ensuring the independence of the auditors? Uh, I think that's a very relevant question. Thank you, sir. So, uh, I think when you rightly mentioned that, you know, uh, I think someone mentioned that both women and men have an equal set of responsibilities when it comes to any role, be it corporate governance or the directorship. I think, yes, uh, they, uh, in terms of the financial prudence, I would say definitely they bring different perspective and uh, uh, in the audit committees as well, uh, the, the and the independent actors plays a larger role. So, the kind of perspective which has been bring on table uh, in terms of the, uh, when the important issues are discussed, that's kind of something very important and, uh, you know, uh, bringing different perspective on the table. And, uh, uh, you know, on the ESG, I would also like to mention on the non-financial information, there is so much uh, emphasis uh, by the corporates on the ESG and especially the BRSR framework and the reporting, which is being mandated from the next year onwards for the top thousand listed entities. So uh, there are also, you know, the women directors uh, are playing and can play a larger role. I, I would like to see it like this. So I, I think in nutshell, what I just want to say that women are no less than men and uh, they kind of the responsibilities which they are carrying uh, by playing this larger role on the board is, is quite onerous at the same time, very responsible, uh, where they are representing stakeholders, shareholders, and the, and the uh, you know, kind of answerable to the director, uh, to the regulators as well. So, so I think, yeah, uh, and that's from my perspective on the, uh, on the, on the, on the audit committees and the board of directors. So, Haldi, if I may be allowed to. Yeah, please. Supplement. I chaired the audit committee of Tata Delhi Services and serve on several audit committees too. And I would say that um, uh, typically the res research shows that the risk profile of women is a little more conservative. So uh, I think uh, that blend of um, different pro risk profiles do benefit both the audit committee and the risk management committee. But otherwise, I think as long as the audit committee members and the audit committee chair is qualified and skilled to, uh, to, to be a member of the audit committee and chair of the committee, I don't think really a different, there is a difference between the male leadership or the female leadership uh, of the audit committee. Having made that point, there is a research which shows that participation of women in committees is very low, not because they don't want to be there, but because they haven't got a seat at the table. So I'm hoping that in 23 and 24, when there is a churn in boards, there will be more women who will chair committees and more women will make it to the committees of the board. So that's very, very interesting observation you made that while there are boards, not have representations on the committees. Uh, that's indeed very, very surprising finding. Uh, uh, Mr. Gupta, your research that study that you carried out, do you endorse what Ms. Nishandani is saying? Absolutely, because of the paucity of time, I could not really come out with all the findings and uh, dimensions of my research. I just uh, uh, talked about uh, some of the ideas which were coming from the women director themselves as to what kind of orders they are facing on the board and some of the male members' perspective, but yes, definitely I do endorse uh, Madam's uh, views on this regard, that uh, they definitely bring a different perspective on the table of the boards. Also a saying, or there is a popular book available in the market, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. And I think both male and female directors on the corporate boards, they supplement each other, and that's how the corporate boards are going to function in future, and taking also the ESG cues going forward to a higher level and better levels. I fully endorse the views of Matt. 
Ms. Sonal, you have been, you, you were saying that you were lucky enough to be a member of the board where there was large representation of women and the board was very conducive for the, uh, for the, or, or enabler, <coughs> enabling chairman and the enabling board to uh, allow you to perform better. Uh, and that's what uh, Ms. Mitsundani was saying that the role of the chairman becomes highly important. That's very important. So, in what way you feel that uh, the board has been very effective, or board can be made very effective and conducive for the human participation? Well, I, in my personal opinion, I think what was good with the boards and the boards that I sit on is we weren't looking for traditional skill sets or women uh, coming only from the finance world. Uh, Ms. Meechanani also said that we have people coming in from uh, marketing and um, sales and marketing, people coming in from CSR expertise. Uh, I myself am a lawyer. I work in the area of ethics and compliance. So I think we're not only looking for a certain type of person, but we're looking for SMEs in their personal fields. And I think that combination of people just brings in such a diverse perspective to the board. Uh, also in terms of age diversity, um, you know, all of us on the board are of similar age. Uh, we are fairly young boards. We're all in our 50s. And I think that I do see even that age diversity bringing in some very fine nuances to the board where there is a low risk, high risk, new technology, diligence, um, discipline. So I think each person brings in a very, very different quality onto the board. I think if you go out looking with a cookie cutter, uh, list saying that, you know, this is what I'm looking for. You may not get the right person, uh, but I think if you value what each person brings in terms of their own expertise and their own SME uh, that they carry to the board, I think that that really falls for um, a better celebrated board and a, a more open board. So that's been my experience. I've really learned a lot in this journey, um, but I, I think that it, and it's interesting because I've heard this whole thing of there are not enough women and, uh, you know, where are the women? And I think uh, so well said that you're not looking in the right places. There are enough women uh, that qualify to be on boards as independent directors. Uh, probably they just need to make themselves more visible. I think that's the important thing. Probably women don't market themselves as efficiently and that needs to be done. So thank you. I think that's indeed the very, very, uh, very, very useful comments that you have made. And uh, Santoshi, we are coming to an end uh, to the webinar. And before uh, I hand it over to you, I would just tell each of the uh, distinguished panelists to say final few words uh, about uh, what they would feel to make the, uh, the role of women directors more effective at the board level. So first uh, to from to, to start with Ms. Sonal from you. Sir, I would just say be heard, uh, up your skill set and ensure that you get in touch with the right person. Networking is important. Um, and the more work you do, the more you publish, the more known you are in your field, you will get picked up or, or recognized as a potential board member. So I, I think that's important. Yes, excellent. Mr. Gupta? Um, I think uh, what uh, women need is passion and ambition for becoming a board member. That would be the key driver. Then, of course, the whole set of other skills which are required, networking, knowledge, skills, whatever, everything will follow from there. So passion and ambition. And finally, to over to you, Ms. Meechandani. I think uh, all the good points have been made, but my appeal to chairs and NRC chairs is that don't stop at one woman director. If you've got joy with the one woman director on board, keep your eyes open and fish in different talent pools. And I'm sure that you'll have great joy if you bring in the right women directors, more than one onto your board. Thank you. I think the final words really summarize the proceedings of the day. And what is most heartening to note is that none of the 
uh, panelists have advocated for a reservation or increasing uh, the women number of women directors on the board through the process of the law. While everyone felt that the women directors have contributed, have added value, and they are no less competent at no less caliber than the uh, than with their counterpart male male directors, and they are not in competition with them. They are there to prove their 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 own effectiveness and efficiencies. And uh, so I would uh, uh, end with that note. And uh, it has been an excellent session with the distinguished panel panelists expressing their experience and their thought process. Uh, thank you very, very much. Thank you, one and all. Thank, you. thank you, Dr. Aldia, for sharing the thank session. You, thank My you. pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Ashok Halia, sir, as well as all the panelists who have made this very enlightening session and contributed uh, for the benefit of the audience over here. And we would just uh, like to also, you know, uh, upload this video on YouTube official page of ASOCHAM for the benefit of uh, the other participants who registered but could not join for the other reasons. Uh, so um, just to apprise this thing over here, uh, I now request Mr. Business has never to please come in and uh, propose a final vote of thanks and then we will um, yeah over to you Vijay Sardeva sir sure uh, thank you Santosh and uh, thank you Dr. Haldia for hosting a wonderful session uh, I think uh, somewhere uh, I feel slightly held back hearing the session uh, because somewhere uh, what we are talking here about is uh, directly or indirectly on 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 women's role or or women's uh, uh, women empower, uh, empowerment and 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 the similar uh, topics there on but I think uh, uh, with the with the Indian mythology or or Indian culture women always held that important pedestal in every walk of life uh, there are still a lot of communities uh, there are still a lot of uh, even tribal communities where women's are uh, women are the leader of the uh, family, so I think uh, we we have to start seeing that it is not about women, but it is about the capabilities, the strengths which which uh, every gender, every every uh, uh, technocrat holds, and which comes from the board. So uh, board. So taking from the topic is what should be a right responsible corporate board. I think the answer is the right responsible corporate board is a is a it's an eminent and uh, classic mix of various capabilities, various strengths, uh, various backgrounds, uh, not only from the industry point of view or financial capabilities, uh, but uh, capabilities uh, on, on, on the diverse matters like uh, ESG, which is, which is the next thing which every corporate has to move. Uh, we have taken so much from the Mother Earth and it's time to at least balance it out if, if we, we can't give it back. So, uh, uh, women on the board, uh, there comes with the, the specific maturity, uh, emotional intelligence, the strengths which which women uh, hold. And as a society, it is not something that uh, the world is creating a, a pedestal for women, but I think it is last, if we see from the, the evolution of mankind, maybe in last couple of uh, hundred of years only, the, the world started changing more towards uh, the male dominated society. So it is not giving uh, a pedestal, but it is giving back what was always deserved right from the mythology or from the history of human uh, race, uh, more specifically India with its rich uh, culture and heritage. So with this, uh, uh, we formally thank uh, uh, Dr. Haldia once again and, and to all the uh, panel members here for sharing wonderful insights. Uh, Ms. Sonal uh, Matu, Ms. Uh, Shazia Elmi, Dr. S.K. Uh, Gupta, C.A. Deepa Agarwal, and of course, uh, Ms. Uh, Hiru Vishanani. So thank you all for sharing your insights. And uh, I could see some of the comments which were continuously rolling. So a lot of those questions have been addressed or a lot of, uh, apart from questions for comments, but uh, seeing those comments, I could see that the ethos of the viewers was completely on page and as very rightly uh, directed by uh, Dr. Ashok Kalia that nobody was 
it was not a debate it was it was uh, just a way of constructive views so that is what i could see uh, as as being echoed uh, coming from various comments in the chat box which was live and and, and we could all see that and uh, yeah, with this, uh, let me also thank on behalf of our chairperson, who's also a, a leading women uh, with various capabilities. So we thank you all on behalf of Ms. Preeti Marutra. Uh, and, and we thank uh, uh, Santosh Parashar and the complete team, Vikas Vardman, Jatin, the IT team at, at, at Ashok Shab to set up this event uh, so nicely and so uh, seamlessly, which I believe that all the viewers uh, could enjoy and 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 use the technology of, of uh, having this wonderfully set up event uh, uh, on on board here. So thanks again uh, again to all of you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thanks to Vijay Sajdev sir for uh, um, concluding this uh, session and proposing vote of uh, thanks finally. And this is just for reference of the participants over here as well as uh, eminent panelists and guests in the session. Uh, we are just trying to come out with uh, not many, but limited to hundreds such stories which have uh, made some, you know, distinguished contribution in their boards. We will not like to have any critical insights, uh, which may, you know, uh, otherwise be of conflict of interest within. But uh, there are uh, always the, you know, ways of presenting such information where your views and your um, excellent decision making and the influence impact on the board which would have been possibly uh, contributed by you and if that is presented in a manner where we are perceiving to come out with compendium with 100 stories of such women leading uh, you know uh, independent directors women or uh, other way director uh, on the board that can further sensitize to <coughs> thousands or 2000 more women to get inspired over and then contribute to why uh, that way uh, and and they can for, further perceive for their aspiration, uh, you know, becoming the board directors. Uh, therefore, we would request to please keep uh, making your points. Uh, we will, uh, after this conference uh, session, we will share across uh, with you uh, the format of performer that we have developed over, wherein you can start filling that information. Would urge upon you to please get it nominated to your respective corporate boards. We are in your distinguished, you know, story and the, you know accomplishments, your journey as independent director or as women director, can we offer some relevance to uh, you know future aspiring women directors? So thank you very much for uh, having with us this uh, evening, and look forward to your continued participation in our endeavors and support guidance throughout. Thank you so thank much, you. Ashok Kalya sir, S.K. Gupta sir, Hiru Mirchandani madam, Deepa ji. Yes, sir. Thanks to all. Thanks to my team and IT team as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Santosh.